So that first verse that I read on that cover um, said, I shall not die but live. I said that was um, from Psalm 118, 17. A lot of you know that the Psalms are songs, just like we sang just now. These were the book of Psalms. There's 150 different songs that Israel sang and that they would get together during the feasts every year and they would sing these Psalms together and it, and it gave them a core identity. And it helps us today too, right? Psalm 23 is read constantly at funerals because it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Right? I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's what you need to remind yourself now. We do not have to fear evil, for God is with us. We're his children. He loves us. He's not a distant, angry God waiting to punish us. He's a loving father, Abba Father. I will fear no evil. For you are with me, Lord. That gives us peace in our soul. Even though an enemy might be encamped around about me, he prepares a table for me, even in the presence of my enemy. That's the protective covering that our God gives us. So there was another part of this particular psalm, which is uh, a proclamation that I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. When I have a testimony of being delivered or being healed, I live to declare the, the works of the Lord, the miracles of God, how my life was completely turned around by God in interceding in my life, and, and that divine intervention in my life prevented me from dying and is causing me to live, and now for the rest of my life, I want to live to declare the works of the Lord. So another part of that psalm, just right before that, it says, songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. Here comes the warfare. It's not so easy to sing songs of victory when you're hunkered down in the bunker and you're not allowed to leave your house. In the natural, there's lots of reasons to be upset and to be fearful, but that's not how the Lord does it. He says, right here in the psalm, songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. That's what we do. We sing songs of joy and victory. When God wanted to win a battle, he sent worshipers first. When David brought the ark back into Jerusalem, he was dancing, so much so that his wife was embarrassed for him. And he said, oh, really? You think that was bad? I will be even more undignified than this because I'm celebrating that the presence of God is back in the middle of the camp again. This is how we have to live. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, even in the midst of coronavirus, I will bless the Lord. It's not conditional on whether things are going well for me or not. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. This is the power of the decree. All your promises, Lord, are yes and amen. Faithful you are. <laughs> Faithful forever you will be. Trust God, amen? Just keep saying it out loud. There's something about the power of our words Death and life are in the power of our words. As you sing scripture, as you sing Christian songs, don't sing it silently to yourself. Speak it out into the atmosphere. Your spirit hears yourself singing it, and it reinforces your spiritual immune system so that you won't be hijacked by fear. All right, 15 said, songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. The strong right arm of the Lord is raised in triumph. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. You could do a lot worse than focusing on those verses. And that's where, in verse 17, it says, I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell. And some versions say, the wonders of the Lord. The glorious works of the Lord. The miracles of the Lord. That's what we're believing for. So um, I'm sure you would understand that in the last couple of weeks, in my dual role, I, I work in the stock market. I always have for the last 20 years since we started the church. I, I've, I've had my foot in the marketplace as well as here at the church. And we've been through other financial crises before. And this one is shaping up as one. It doesn't have to be a long-term one if there's a quick solution. And there still could be a quick solution. Um, I'm not meaning to talk about economics and finance right now just saying that we're in a disruption. People are very worried about their finances, about being not being told they can't go to work. Business owners that are told that they're not allowed to operate their businesses. It's a form of, of almost like martial law. 
and they ha the bills don't go away, but if I can't open the doors to my business, and what about unemployment and all these other things? So really could be easy to be hijacked by fear. And God knows everything about us, right? He suffered. He knows everything about us. He took on our flesh, just like we talked about during communion today. He knows what we go through. So you need to bring those concerns and those fears to him and say, Lord, I need you to help me. I need to offload this. And he said that. Bring your burden to me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Bring all the things that are weighing you down and bring it to me, and I will give you rest. And that's what we need. Because even scientifically, you can see that when you're stressed out, your natural immune system goes down. It's a tactic of the enemy to make you sick. Stress causes sickness. I won't, again, I'm not going to practice medicine without a license here, but this is proven. You need the peace of God in your heart, not be hijacked by all the news and, and the constant flow of scary things that are going on around us. You know, we are protected. He sings songs of deliverance over us. We just said that today. It says in Psalm 118, verse 17, this is the post I put up on Facebook this week. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Would you say that with me? I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Say it again. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's what we have to remember, amen, that his life is inside of us. I quoted it earlier. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in us. He's the God who calls those things that are not as though they are. And we've been hearing for months and months now how this is the decade of the decree, how this is a weapon, our praise is a weapon, our mouth is a weapon, our voice is a weapon. I've encouraged our congregation to look at one of the videos that we have posted on our YouTube channel uh, by Dutch Sheets, which uh, talks about how the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. But he really does a beautiful job of breaking down what the Word means there. It's not a sword until you speak it, okay? I'm not going to try to reteach it. You can watch it. It says the sword of the spirit is the spoken word of God, if you're, if you're looking for that video. Um, I also just want to encourage you um, to go back and watch the March 8th service that we have posted on our website as well when Chuck Pierce was here. So March 8th, we weren't in the uh, kind of current status that our country is in where there's so many new rules popping up every day of what we can't do and how we have to restrict our movement. We were still allowed to meet that day, and there was just hundreds of people here, and Chuck prophesied, and he also blessed us for our move going to the Fellowship Deaconry, which was scheduled to happen on May 1st. We don't know when the meetings are going to start, but we're still planning to move forward on that. And um, what happened to me when I re-listened to it this week in light of all the things that have happened with the global coronavirus it really puts a whole new light on the prophecies that he gave that day and how incredibly accurate he has been all the way back to September when he first talked about plague-like situations coming. You know, we like to joke around a little sometimes and say for people in ministry, some, are, some just went, but some are sent. And the other beautiful thing about that time with Chuck was that we were sent. We got the blessing to go, and it just really confirmed to me that this is that God has been on this move, even though we haven't physically fully moved over there yet. So I just want to encourage you, if you're part of our congregation and you're part of our family, to don't stop giving to the move because we have a war chest we're building over there. Things are going beautifully. A lot of people got to go there um, that next Sunday after Chuck was here on the 15th, which would have been last Sunday, we got to go into the building together and pray. And it was just the next day that the rules came out and said, um, at first, no more than 50 people, and then, you know, what the current rules are now. So the timing has just been amazing. We had over 100 people in the chapel praying. Even though it's a construction site, we had approval to be in there.